And hello, my name is Martin, and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making the second story to our house. Um, we're also going to be talking about organizing our world outliner. Now, uh, up until this point, we've just been sort of adding things to the screen, and uh, for the most part, you know, there's not a lot of stuff up there, so it's, it's pretty easy to track, and if you click on something, you can find it rather quickly. Um, but there are a couple of organizational tools that we can use, uh, folders and groups, that we're going to talk about real quick uh, that might make uh, moving things, copying things, um, and taking advantage of being able to do that in this software uh, and make that, op uh, make that a little bit easier to actually do. Okay, so the uh, the first thing that we're going to do is really what I want to do is I sort of want to group uh, like things together, like this house. Uh, the subtractive plus the inside box plus the outside box. So I'm going to click on the first one, and uh, I can look at this, and I can actually rename this if I want. Uh, there, if, if you right-click on it and you go to edit, I believe the rename function is right there, and uh, there's also the F2 which would be the shortcut to be able to do that. So let's go ahead and name this um, house. Uh, let's do house underscore first story uh, outside. Or maybe let's do a uh, house outside. Um, if you're going to find that people like using abbreviations, sometimes they'll run words together like box, uh, box brush and leave no spaces. Um, just depends on how many of these objects you're going to have and how complex you want to get with the name if it needs to be repetitive for whatever reason. Um, so we're going to say house outside one. I'm going to click on the one on the inside. That then brings me to this brush right here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit F2. And I'm going to say house underscore inside. Okay. And now the other thing I've also got is I've got the geometry, uh, the subtractive geometry. And uh, we're going to go ahead and right click on that. And remember it's edit, rename, or the F2. I'm going to hit backspace to remove the name. And I'm going to call this uh, door underscore sub one or you know what let's call this door one underscore sub this way i know that if i uh, once i put a door like an actual door here and have a door frame i might create a folder and put all of these things together and it'll be really easy to identify this as door one make the frame frame one or door one underscore frame and then door one underscore door uh, and then that way I have a naming system that I'm starting to use so then that way as you look at the hundreds of objects that you are eventually going to have in this world outline for an individual level um, you'll be able to find things a little bit easier because instead of everything being called box brush box brush two box brush three box brush four and you come in here now I can sit there and I can go okay I remember calling this uh, door one and then I'll be able to uh, basically filter the list and find just the things that I'm actually looking for. Uh, maybe I clicked on something and I accidentally changed its location and it's a sub and now all of a sudden I can't find it. Uh, I could come up here and type in sub for anything that's a subtract, uh, you know, a subtractive mesh and boom, all of a sudden now I can find those things. Um, because if, if, if this, it is invisible, if that thing moves out of the way, you'll, you're not going to be able to see where it is, and it's going to be impossible to select. So if you have it named correctly, instead of going down every single box that you have, all you have to do is hit uh, go up here, create a filter, write in the word sub, and you know you're going to be able to find all of your subtractive meshes this way in a list, uh, and then find the one that you're actually looking for. So very, very useful uh, to name your stuff correctly. Uh, incredible time-saving capability that you're going to be able to give yourself. It's like a superpower. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we have those th those objects created and renamed. Uh, so now what I want to do is um, essentially what I could do is I could throw these all into a folder. And let me do let me actually do that first. So um, I'm going to come here and notice that up here next to the search bar where we just were, we do have a folder menu. So if I click on the main menu, and what I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to uh, minimize all the boxes that I can. 
and uh, I'm going to select this and that is the first person example map. Uh, first person example map is actually the name of the map and a map is our level. So um, go figure, right? So if we go back to our content folder, I believe we go into first person, maybe inside character. No, let's see where they're throwing this. Uh, first person, starter content. Wow, first person. You know what? I could just type in map and then follow it back. Oh, uh, you know what? This is probably with our first person map and that will okay so there we go so this is what a map would look like uh if it was an icon so you have a starter map we also have the first person example map which is actually what we're working in currently right now um so i believe if i yeah it's going to be in first person so first person bp there it is maps and there's the map itself that's what we were just looking at so content first person bp and map is how we would get to that map. Um, so that's what we're seeing. That's the same thing that we're seeing up here at the top. Inside that map, you're going to have all the folders that is going to hold the content that is going to be inside this level. Um, and from here, once we've minimized everything, we can come down here to the bottom space. And if we, well, really what it is, is if we have this thing selected and we hit new, because this is the top folder, it should leave one folder even with everything else. And that's essentially what I'm trying to do. So we'll click that. We'll see that it has created that folder. You can see that it's not subjugated or not put in, you know, it's not a folder inside of a folder. It's a folder at the root directory of, um, of this map. And let's go ahead and call this house. Okay, so now we have that folder. Now, the thing right now is that that folder is empty. And the reason why I know that folder is empty is because the eyeball is actually closed. So I can, you know, so I, if there is nothing in the folder, that's what it's gonna look like. Uh, the second we click and drag and move something into that folder, that eyeball will be lit if the object itself was visible. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go and find our door. So that's the door sub. I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna literally just click, left click and drag that into house. And you can see now that this is inside because it's not even with like it was before. It actually has a bit of an indention. And if I go into house, now I have this little arrow, which allows me to expand and collapse, collapse the, uh, the folder itself. And in there, I can now see what's, uh, what's available. So house inside. So what we just did was we clicked on one thing and dragged it in there. I can hold shift and select multiple objects, grab those and drop them into house. So now if I do that to house and make all of house invisible, that's what we see when, uh, uh, well, that's what we don't see when house is not visible, right? Okay. So what that's done now is it's made it very convenient for us to make a second level, uh, or a second story to this house, because all we have to do now is select house, right click, edit, duplicate. And now we have a secondary version of that house. We have the folder. Okay. We have the folder, but all the objects didn't get, get copied in. So what we want to do now is grab those objects, right click, edit, duplicate. What you really want to do here is grab the first item and just go ahead and click and drag um, because it, all the duplicate copies will be selected and they'll be there. Um, now, the cool thing about this is, uh, you know, everything got named two, so second story, that might work out. Um, and everything is still selected. So what I can do now is I could literally just grab everything, drag it, and bring it up. And now all of a sudden I have my second story. It's a little bit off. So let's go ahead and try to move this into the correct location. Okay, that looks a little better. Now, the other thing that's also happening is this is moving in increments of 10 and it's snapping to the value of moves of, let me see, that's the scaling option. Yeah, so this is the first one here where it's actually making its moves. So let me actually drop this down to moves of one. Let me see if we can't get this a little cleaner. Again, if you wanna zoom in. Okay, we can also. Now, 
this is where we have the other problem. Uh, what I tried to do right there was I tried to grab this object and push it down and make it one, you know, make it push down into the, the layer by using the end key like we have before. Uh, but because each one of these are separate layers, each one of these vertices sort of changed itself and I got something really wonky. So let me do that again. I'm going to hit end and you can see that the top door kind of like broke through the, the bottom ceiling and it thinks that that's the you know, wherever its compass is, is the, the base of that floor. So let me hit uh, undo, bring that back up. And at this point, what I want to probably do is I want to group these. So I'm going to select them. And if I right click, I would go and I would see groups and there's actually control G. So that's actually a pretty simple shortcut to remember. So we're going to hit control G. Now, the cool thing about that is that if I deselect and click something else and then come back, well, it didn't actually do it. So let's hit control G. There we go. Nope. Right click, group. Okay. So it's creating a group actor. Let's grab that. And now if I hit end, hmm. Now we can do this the old fashioned way. I mean, I can grab the first box, find its location, grab its location and move it. But having them grouped should have allowed us to be able to see that the, the problem with it being grouped is that all of the objects together make up this, um, they have multiple locations. So it's impossible to really sit there and, uh, make them move the way that you want them to. Um, so we'll just go back to just getting them lined up this way. By sight. Okay, so that worked the way I wanted it to. They're grouped, I hit end, and they move together like a group. Looks like there's a little bit of dysfunction with that, but uh, we'll be able to fix that up in a minute. And actually, I, I really don't need that doorway, so let me just go ahead and delete that. Oops, I have everything grouped. Uh, yeah, so that's probably not gonna be good. So let me right click on this, let me do an ungroup. I'm gonna select that doorway and I'm going to hit delete. That should delete my doorway. And now I'm going to select the inside, hold the outside, uh, there it is, inside, hold shift, grab them together. We're going to group them. And I keep getting some wonky stuff. So let's do a couple of layers of undo. So shift, shift, Let's move this up so it's away from everything else. Let's control G to group it. Okay, let's hit end. So then that way it moves down to the bottom. And Okay, I think I've got that now. Okay, cool. So now we have our first floor and our second floor. And if I go into my first floor, uh, the second floor will see that. We go into the first floor, we'll see this. Now, of course, um, 
this would be house one house two we could go ahead and call that let's say house uh rename remember that the renaming is an f2 so we'll call this uh house underscore st1 for story one and with the second one We'll go ahead and name this, um, we'll hit F2, and we'll call this house underscore ST2. Okay, and then we know that that's the second story. Now with these two all moved, and uh, having not lost any of the, um, Yeah, because they were grouped, basically everything was, um, the, the proportions between the two boxes were kept. So you don't have to worry about the wall thicknesses having changed just a little bit or anything like that. They're both going to be consistent from the first floor to the second floor because the second one was moved as a group. Okay, so now that it's moved and it's grouped, we don't really need it grouped anymore. So I'm going to select both of those and hit Control-G again, or right-click and go to Groups and Ungroup. So now I know that they're up in group because if I select one, I'm not selecting the other one. And the reason why I'm doing this is so that way I can, again, if I need to cut that layer out so I can see what's going on, uh, we get that cool interior view thing again. And there we go. So I hope you guys uh, got a lot out of this video and you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.